Hello, in this lesson we'll be looking at normalization, which is a series of steps that turns an inefficient error strewn database into a database which uses its storage space efficiently, eliminates redundant data, reduces or eliminates inconsistent data, and makes the database more manageable. On this slide, there are three rules. You need to know and memorize these. When all the rules have been met, then you will have an efficient database with high integrity. So for first normal form, otherwise known as 1NF, a relation is in first normal form when each attribute or field has only atomic values and repeated fields or groups have been removed. Second normal form is a relation is in second normal form or 2NF when each non-key field is functionally dependent on the primary key. Transitive dependencies may still exist in second normal form. Third normal form or 3NF, a set of relations is in third normal form when each non-key field is fully functionally dependent on the primary key. And as we go through this video, we'll be explaining these rules to you. The first step is to turn an unnormalized table into a normalized table. This will mean the table is going to be in first normal form. A table is called a relation in first normal form and must have the following features. A relation has a name that is distinct from other relation names. There are no repeating groups. Each cell of the relation contains exactly one atomic or single value. Each attribute has a distinct name. The value of an attribute are all of the same data type, so you cannot mix these data types. And no duplicated records. Each record is unique. The relation on this slide is not in first normal form, as it has repeating fields such as car details and car description. There are also null values in this table as well, on the Mary Hogg row. Therefore, this table is unnormalized. In this relation, we see the previous issues resolved. Now, there are no repeating fields and no null values. However, this relation is still not in first normal form, otherwise called 1NF. The reason is that in the car details field, now called an attribute, we see that there are two values in one cell and of different data types, the registration number and the cost of the car. This makes each cell in that attribute non-atomic, for a relation to be in first normal form, all the relation cells must be atomic. Atomic means there can only be one value per cell. In this picture, we see that each cell holds a single value. The data is said to be in first normal form or 1NF. This form is the starting point for normalization to begin you will not be expected to write out a relation, that's the table, in your exam. You will, however, be asked to write out the relation in shorthand. Here, you see under the table how this is done. The word outside of the brackets is the name of the relation, car driver. All of the words within the brackets are the attributes to the relation. Driver license number has an underline under it. This shows that this attribute is the primary key. The primary key, when we come to look at entity relationship diagrams, is an important attribute, as it uniquely identifies each record. When discussing relational databases, a record, as you may recall, is called a tuple. 
In this case, each driver will have their own unique driver license number. A primary key can be made up of more than one attribute, and this is called a composite key. Now that we have a relation, we can start to normalize to get rid of various anomalies. These being data repetition and redundancy, insert, update and delete anomalies, and improve poor storage use. So now, let's have a look at second normal form, or 2NF. On the slide, you see the rule for second normal form. This is something you should memorize, along with the other rules of 1NF, 2NF, and 3NF. In 2NF, it says a relation is in second normal form when each non-key field is functionally dependent on the primary key. Transitive dependencies may still exist in second normal form. Underneath this rule is the result of what a relation will look like in second normal form. So, how did we get to this point? Well, if we look at the table, we could split the large table quite easily into two tables. The first relation containing the driver license number has other attributes which are connected fully to that primary key. The second table has the car registration as the primary key and has its attributes fully connected to the car registration attribute. We can see that the tables are linked as the driver license number is the foreign key and therefore links the two tables. When we come to look at entity relationship diagrams, we will discuss in which relation a foreign key should be placed and why. In the second normal form rule, it says that each non-key field, also called attribute, should be functionally dependent on the primary key. That means that each field should have a connection to the primary key, though it may be a weak one. In this case, all of the attributes have a very strong connection to their associated primary key. So in this case, the table is also in third normal form. We will look at the term transitive dependencies in more detail in our next example. Below, the table is how you write them out. Please take a note that the driver license number in the car relation has FK in brackets. This shows this field as the, file, as the foreign key. So we have two relations, car driver. In those brackets are all the attributes and driver license number is the primary key because it is underlined. In the car relation, we again have a whole bunch of attributes within its brackets. Car registration is the primary key and it's linked with the driver license number and that is shown as a foreign key by having FK after it. Also, please take note that the process of normalization will turn one long table with many fields and few records into a database with more than one relation, with each relation having few attributes, but more tuples or records. In short, we go from one long thin table to at least two short and fat tables. Here is our second example about medical centers and the patients who go there and the doctors who work in them. You will notice some problems with this table. We have repeating groups, such as appointment, date, time, and appointment doctor attributes. We also have several cells which are non-atomic due to having several values in one cell. One example under the appointment date stroke time attribute are the date, time, and price values in one cell. A second example in the appointment doctor attributes, we have the doctor name, 
the medical centre, the suburb and phone number. Currently, this table is unnormalised. Let us remind ourselves how to go from unnormalised to first normal form, or 1NF. The first normal form rule states, a relation is in first normal form when each attribute, field, has only atomic values and repeated fields or groups have been removed. So we have removed the repeating fields by deleting the repeating groups. Another method could be to create a new table or by adding additional rows. We've also got rid of any non-atomic groups by creating new attributes. The picture shows the table now in first normal form. Pause the video for a moment and make sure you can see how the table has gone from unnormalized to first normal form. Note which attributes have been deleted and which rows have been added to get rid of repeating data and non-atomic values. To remind you, you will not be asked to write out a table. You will be asked to express the structure of a relation in short hand form, like the example below, in which this relation has been given a unique name called appointment. The primary key is shown with the underline and this is patient ID. We now need to turn our first normal form table into a second normal form table. Let's remind ourselves of the second normal form rule or 2NF. A relation is in second normal form when each non-key field is functionally dependent on the primary key. Transitive dependencies may still exist in 2NF. We have converted our single table into three tables. One for patient details, a second for appointments and a third for the doctor details. So all of the attributes are now functionally dependent on their primary key. Below is how we would write these tables. So we have patient, everything in that bracket is part of the patient table with patient ID as the primary key. Doctor has its own relation. Everything stored within those brackets are part of the doctor relation and doctor ID is the primary key. Appointment again has a, a number of attributes stored within its brackets, but here we have something different. We have patient ID and doctor ID both as foreign keys. So do take note that in our first example of the CARS database, we linked the tables using a foreign key in one of the tables. In this case, we've created a link table, this being the appointment table, which does not have a primary key, but rather a composite key of two foreign keys patient ID and doctor ID. It is these two foreign keys which make each row unique. Now, let's spend a few moments trying to understand the second part of the second normal form rule. That being transitive dependencies may still exist in second normal form. A transitive dependency is the strength of the relationship that the attribute has to the primary key. This is best explained using family relationships. On the slide, we see Mary. Mary has a son called John. Mary has also a sister called Jane. Jane's relationship to John is that of a nephew. The reason Jane has this relationship is because of her sister, Mary. So we could say that Jane's relationship to John is through her sister Mary, or that Jane's relationship to John is transitive because of Mary. 
as Mary holds a relationship with her, both her sister Jane and her son John. Also be aware that one relationship is stronger than the other. A relationship of her son is a closer and strong relationship than that of a nephew. Bearing in mind what we have just said on the previous slide, let's have a closer look at the doctor relation table. This table is in second normal form, as all of the non-key fields are functionally dependent on the primary key. That is, they are all connected in some way to the primary key, the Dr. S name. However, we have in this table a transitive dependency attribute existing. That is the location attribute. Here, the location attribute has a much stronger connection or dependency to the medical center than the Dr. S name. So on this table, we need to apply the third normal form rule. Here is the third normal form rule. A set of relations is in third normal form, or 3NF, when each non-key field is fully functionally dependent on the primary key. What we need to do with the doctor relation is to split up this table again, as you can see on this slide. So now we have a fully normalized situation where each non-key field is completely or fully dependent on its primary key. Here we created a medical center primary key which is also the foreign key in the doctor ID table. The final result is that we have gone from one long unnormalized table to four shorter but with more records in each relation. We can now be implementing the relations into a relational database program. By third normal form, redundancy is removed and this improves the integrity of the data by decreasing the likelihood of data anomalies such as update, insert and deletion. To conclude, you will find in your practical work that you are able to create fields or attributes with calculations in them. In your database, the calculation attributes could be within forms, queries, and reports. When normalizing databases, you do not include calculated fields. These are discounted. They're not included. So for example, an age attribute could be a calculated field and would not be included. However, date of birth is not a calculated field and would be a field involved with the normalization process. There are a number of normalization questions and videos you need to look at and practice. These will be found in this week's sector lesson and in Dropbox. Like with many skills needing to be learnt in this course, normalization is one of them. To start with, you might find the process quite hard. Please don't give up and you will get better at it. Our next subtopic video is quite a short one. We will look at database interconnectivity and then move on to entity relationship diagrams. So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.